Hello, darkness, my old friend. You've come to talk with me again. Sens lose 8-7 to to the Chicago Blackhawks. Yep, you heard that right. 8-7. to Almost as many goals as points in the Super Bowl. First of all, what a wacky game. The whole night I'm just so confused. What is going on here? Why is this happening? For a non-back-to-back -back game on a Monday night in the middle of the season with neither team about to go on a break or coming off of a break? It just seemed like a really weird time for an 8-7 game. And secondly, although the Sens lost and I hate it when they lose, what a fun night. 15 goals, silliness, bad goaltending, great passing. The game had it all. How could you not at least have a little fun? Unless, of course, you're a goalie. The nine first period goals mark just the fourth time it's happened in the last 30 years. It's tied for third most all time behind the Sabres and Habs from 82 and the Canucks and Flames from 87, with both games having 10. And obviously, it's the most in any period in Sens history, improving on their previous mark of eight reach five different times. It's also the first time in Sens history that they've scored seven goals in a game and lost, having gone 45-0 and before last night. And it's just the second time in Blackhawks history that they've given up seven and one. The only other time it's happened, they ironically won eight to seven as well, beating Montreal on October 9th, 1982. Since then, they were zero, 108, and three with two ties. Because remember when there used to be ties and no shootouts? That was almost three lockouts ago. Individually, it was a pretty good night too. Patrick Kane picked up a goal and an assist, extending his point streak to 18 straight and his assist streak to 17 straight. The 17 straight games with an assist is third all time behind Adam Oates' 18 and Wayne Gretzky's 23. Alex Dabrinkat also had an excellent night, posting three goals and two assists to climb up the Hawks and NHL record books. His hat-trick last night was his fourth in the last two seasons, leaving him second in the NHL behind Ovechkin's six. He's also two goals away from breaking the Blackhawks' record for most goals in his first two seasons. Artemi Panarin currently holds the record at 61, while Debrinkat is now tied with Denis Savard at 60. And Taves, who is actually ahead of Debrinkat before this game, now sits fourth with 58. There was more Hawks records too, but I need to get going. There were 15 goals in this game. We're going to be here for a while. As always though, let's kick things off with lineup changes. With the Sens getting healthier, they had to make some roster moves, as Darren Archibald, Jack Rodewald, and Philip Gustafson were all returned to Belleville. Mikhail Bodker returned to the lineup after missing a couple weeks with a mid-body injury. He replaced Darren Archibald, and the Sens rolled with 12 forwards and 6 defensemen for the second straight game. The blue line stayed the same after picking up a win in Winnipeg on Saturday, and Anders Nilsson got a six straight start and goal. Now here's the fun part. Andy didn't get the start despite it being a 600th game in his hometown, and he didn't get that start because his eye hadn't fully healed from the injury suffered last Monday. But they already sent Gustafson back, so Andy had to back up, and as it turns out, he had to come into the game anyway. If he wasn't well enough to start in a special game, why was he backing up? there's always a chance the backup will have to play. Not that the loss was on Andy, but what a weird decision. So how did we get from Nilsson to Andy? Let's run through this. Things got off to an excellent start for the Sens, as it didn't take them too long to get on the board. Slater Cuckoo gets sent off for slashing just over a minute in, and the Sens take advantage. Duchesne and Dezingle play pitch and catch. Duchesne feeds Ryan in the slot. He spins, hooks a shot on goal. It somehow fools Delia, goes in the goal, and just over two minutes in, the Sens lead 1-0. Eesh. That's not a good goal to give up. Wasn't hard, wasn't screened, wasn't perfectly placed. Delia just missed it. I almost feel bad taking that one. But a goal is a goal, and the Sens lead 1-0. And 34 seconds later, things go from good to great. Balsers Tierney and Bodker race in 3-on-2. Bodker leads the rush and feeds Tierney in the Hawks' zone. He sees Balsers sneak in behind the Hawks' D, feeds him with a perfect pass. Balsers one times one through the legs of Dalia, and the Sens lead 2-0. Woo-hoo-hoo! What a goal. My goodness. I really love this line. As terribly as Ottawa is playing, in the sense that they're never winning anymore, lately, I've actually enjoyed the lines they've put together. Dezingle, Duchesne, and Ryan has been playing well, especially offensively. 
Ryan doesn't always get points, but he's helping that line produce. The Chucky Whitestone line has been good all season. Pajot's return really helped solidify that third shutdown line with Smith and Pajarvi. It could be better, but it could be a lot worse too. And then there's the San Jose Shark line. They haven't played together a ton this season, but when they do, I find that they generate quite a bit of zone time and they're able to capitalize on some of their chances. Tierney, Bodker, and Balsers may not be a line I would put even close to the top of the conversation for best in the league, but they've been pretty good so far this year, they've shown flashes of chemistry, and you saw it on this play. Unfortunately, all of those good feelings would quickly go away. 114 after Balsers made it 2-0, the Hawks respond. With the Hawks on the power play, Taves brings the puck into the send zone and leaves it for Kane at the point. He goes back down low to Taves, who goes cross ice back door to a wide open to Brinkat. He bangs it in the empty net, and just like that, Ottawa's lead is 2 to 1. Good thing you cover the guy standing right in front of your net! Oh no, we'll cover Strom, but we won't do anything about to Brinkat. Well, you're in for a treat now. And 113 later, the Brinkat strikes again. Forsling throws one down the ice, Strom knocks it down, and Kapoon picks it up at the Sens blue line. He carries it into the send zone, sees Debrinkat streaking hard to the net, hits him with a perfect pass, Debrinkat one times it in the net, and just like that, we're tied at two. Wow. Another great display of defense from the Sens. Well done. Although I'm frustrated by the defense, the game is still tied. We're four goals in, and we've barely played five minutes. Are you having fun yet? We haven't even reached a slowing down point either, as the rampant pace continues, and three minutes later, the Sens have their lead back. Stone throws a shot on goal, Delia stops it, can't control the rebound, White picks it up, bangs it in the net, and just like that, the Sens lead 3-2. Boy, that marks the end of the night for Delia, and really, who's surprised? I for one was not. That was a pretty rough first period. The rough first period continued, as Patrick Kane got on the board, less than 5 minutes after Colin White gave the Sens the lead. Kane wheels in down the left side in the Sen zone. Lejoie comes across to challenge him. As he does that, Kane fires a wrister far side by the blocker of Nilsson, and just like that, we're tied at three. After having not much chance on the first two, this was an ugly one. Nilsson needs to have it. Not even a minute after Kane made it 3-3, Strom gives the Hawks the lead. Keith dumps the puck down the wall, it bounces off CeCe, and heads to the front of the net. Nilsson reaches out to play it. As he does, Strom tips at it from the side of the net. It misses Nilsson's stick, gets between his pad and the post, and just like that, the Hawks have their first lead of the night. And for the second time in the period, we have a goalie change. And for the second time in the period, we absolutely should have a goalie change. Like I said earlier, the first two goals that Nilsson gave up really weren't his fault. The last two, though, he really needs to stop those. Both, and especially especially the fourth goal, were just brutal. And now the guy who wasn't well enough to play his 600th game in his hometown because his eye injury hadn't healed enough, he has to come into the game. Brilliant. Even better, with just over five minutes to play in the period, the Hawks strike again. Anisimov carries it in, he drops it for Sakura, he fires a shot towards the goal, Saad tips it in front, it gets by Andy, and the Hawks lead 5-3. Another guy left wide open in front of the net. I'd love to know what goes through their mind when something like that happens. Oh, Sod's going to the net. Oh, Sod doesn't have anyone around him. Eh, to heck with it. What's the worst that could happen? Oh darn, Sod scored. Well, better luck next time. It's just brutal. Amazingly enough, we're still not done. With the first period! With just over two minutes to go in the first, the Sens get their fourth of the period and cut their deficit back to a goal. White chips it down low in the Hawks zone, Kachuk chases after it and wins the race. He sends one back in front of Stone, his one-timer beats Ward, and just like that, it's 5-4 Blackhawks. Incredibly, that's finally the end, and we head to the first intermission with the Hawks in front 5-4. I'm exhausted and we still have two periods to play. I mean, look at this. This is the first period box score. Just goals. It's longer than most movie credits. And of course, because of how wacky the first period was, I honestly expected the final two to be really dull. Boy, was I wrong. Barely a minute and a half into the second, Stone picks off a Debrinkat pass in the neutral zone and feeds Kachuk. He and White race in two on one. Kachuk feeds White. He one times one by Ward. And with 38 and a half minutes to play, we're tied at five. 
Just Mark Stone doing Mark Stone things. Boy, am I gonna miss that. Not even two minutes into the second, and we already have another goal. Buckle up, it's gonna be a long and bumpy ride. After Smith airmails a wide open net that would have given the Sens the lead, the Hawks come back down the ice the other way, and a minute later capitalize on their own chance. Dahlstrom gets a shot on goal. Annie makes a save, but the puck is loose. Harper lazily pokes at the loose puck. It lands on the stick of Strom. He waits patiently, goes cross ice to a wide open to Brinkat. He one times one in the net, and just like that, the Hawks lead 6 5. What a brutal goal! Everyone just stood there and watched Strom hold the puck, and nobody covered to Brinkat going behind them. All five guys stood in the middle of the ice and didn't really do anything. Look at this for a minute. How are you ever going to keep the puck out of your net? Here's all five guys literally standing there staring at Strom. Then he feeds to Brinkat, and I know it's not great quality, but you can see Brinkat wide open in the top left, and none of the Sens seemed to even care that he was there until after he one-timed it in the net. It's just atrocious defense. At least the Hawks fans were having fun, and were hatless, as the goal was Brinkat's third of the night. And just past the midway mark of the period, Sod feeds Forsling, he one times one by Andy, and it's 7-5 Blackhawks. Forsling was wide open on the play, and do you want to know why? Because two Sens players chased after Sod while he carried the puck in the Sens zone. Puck watching doesn't work, and now you know that. A few minutes later, the Sens nearly cut into the Hawks' lead, as Duchesne comes flying in down the right side, fires a backhander that strikes iron and stays out, keeping the Hawks in front by two. Debrinkat then nearly gets his fourth of the night, but with Andy out of position, he fires one off the post himself. Finally, after a ton of action, we get to the second intermission, with the Hawks in front 7-5. And with the Hawks on the power play less than four minutes into the third, Kane feeds Debrinkat from the right point to the left faceoff dot. Debrinkat then feeds Taves from the left faceoff dot to the bottom of the right circle, and with Nilsson coming across, Taves roosts it over him, and the Hawks lead 8-5. <sighs> Here we go again. The Sens used to play a song when Danny Heatley scored a goal. It was called The Heat Is On. Well, the route is on now. Or at least that's how it felt. But the Sens claw their way back once again. With just under 11 minutes to play, Shabbat takes a CC pass in the neutral zone and decides to do it all himself. He wheels down the wall in the neutral zone, blows by Dahlstrom in the Hawk zone, fires an awful dangle shot towards the goal. It somehow beats Cam Ward. And with 10.59 to play, it's 8-6 to six Blackhawks. Nice burst by Shabbat, but that should have never gone in. What an awful goal. Not even six minutes later, Shabbat is at it again. Smith carries the puck into the Hawks' zone and leaves it for Pajarvi. He throws a shot on goal. Cam Ward makes a stop. Pajot picks up the rebound. Cam Ward comes diving across to make that stop too. But Shabbat picks up the loose puck, shovels it home. And just like that, it's 8-7 Blackhawks. What a stud. Enjoy it. You never know how long you're going to get to enjoy seeing a star player like Shabbat play for your team. And as Sens fans, we are all too aware of that fact. Let's enjoy the next couple of years with him. And just like that, with 520 to play, the Sens are down just 8-7. to seven. The Sens get a late power play and pull their goalie for the 6-on-4. Oh great, here we go again. Incredibly, it's not free goal night at the United Center, as the Hawks can't hit the empty net. The Sens can't hit the guarded net, and the Hawks skate away with an 8-7 win. What a wacky game. The Super Bowl was all defense, and the showdown in Chicago was no defense. Just amazing. This must have been one easy game for the video editors at NHL.com who put together the highlight packs. I'll be honest, I watched the condensed highlights of every Sens game, and some nights, when it's a 2-1 game, they'll be putting highlights in of terribly weak shots just to get to their 8-9 minute highlight packs. Well, last night, they didn't have to do that at all. I think the entire highlight pack was just solid goals. And because of all the goals, we've gone very long on this video. So let's quickly get into good news, bad news. The Sens had just one forward, and five total skaters failed to record a point last night. And that is the good news. Yes, the Sens scored seven goals last night, which makes it a lot easier for their players to have points. But it doesn't necessarily mean they're actually going to get those points. Look at the Hawks. They scored eight goals, but saw four forwards and four defensemen fail to register a point. They basically rode one line to victory, as Strom, Kane, and Debrinkat absolutely tore apart the Sens to the tune of five goals, six assists, and 11 points. The Sens, meanwhile, 
did have one line that contributed a fair share of their offense, as Chucky Whitestone combined for nine points, but the Sens also had each of their four lines contribute at least one goal. Getting contributions from everyone is key. The Sens got that in spades. It may not have led to a win, but getting it is half the battle. They at least got that far, and that is the good news. Now, for the bad news. Defense, defense, defense. Where was it? The Sens didn't seem to want to play any, and they were torched because of it. Open players on the first goal, and the second goal, poor goaltending on the third goal, and the fourth goal. Then it was just a matter of not manning up after that. Five, six, seven, eight. They were all the same. The Sens didn't do anything about playing defense last night. Like not a thing. And that is the bad news. Next up, the Sens return to action on Thursday when they wrap up their four game road trip with a visit to New Jersey to take on the Devils. The contest would be the third and final meeting of the season between the two teams, with the home team holding serve in each of the first two. The Sens won 7-3 at home on November 6th, and the Devils returned the favor with a 5-2 win on December 21st. For the Sens, this is a massive matchup. They come into today five points behind the Devils, who sit fourth last in the NHL. The Devils also play Pittsburgh tonight and could stretch that lead. Should they win tonight and then beat the Sens in regulation, they'd move nine points ahead of Ottawa, who would have a game in hand. If they lose tonight and lose again to Ottawa, their lead would be down to three and Ottawa would still have that game in hand. It's a huge four-point game and Ottawa needs to come out on the winning side. See you Thursday night.